Uncle Roger commended me on my amount of garlic, so we'll stick with that. Mm. So I'm gonna go with that, which is seven cloves. Today we're gonna to be finally seeing Andy Cooks, and today we're gonna to be seeing how he makes his pork adobo. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many, many years in the United States and over here in Europe, and I have plenty of other recipe videos on my YouTube channel as well, so be sure to check them out after the, watching this video. If you do enjoy this video, then be sure to give it a like as it will help out the algorithm greatly so more people get to see it. And if you do enjoy my channel, then be sure to hit the subscribe button as it doesn't cost you anything and you won't miss any of my content. Now, let's get started. Welcome back to Andy Cooks, and today we're gonna to run you through my pork adobo, well, it's not my pork adobo recipe, it's a pork adobo recipe that the legend Uncle Roger reviewed. Nephew Andy making Ooh, pork adobo. Oh, pork adobo, nice. So we all know Uncle Roger's just a Malaysian comedian, but he's a very funny Malaysian comedian. Asian people, we treat garlic like we treat our children. They never enough. He's uh, risen to internet stardom by reviewing Asian food, and in particular, normally white guys cooking Asian food. So he seemed to be pretty impressed, and I had pretty good feedback in this one from the Filipino community. So I thought I'd run you through it in more detail. Uncle Roger, or Nigel, is Malaysian, but he has been living in the UK. I don't know for how long, but he has been. And I wonder how much he likes actually living in the UK. If you're not used to the weather, you may not like it. Some people do, some people enjoy it, but not even all English love the clouds all the time. So this is what you're going to need for pork adobo. Pork, obviously, and we're going to go pork belly. This is about 1.2 kilo. That is true. Usually, if the name implies like pork adobo, you will need some pork to make the adobo. Although, not all recipes are like this, especially the one that we reviewed with Jamie. And if you haven't seen that video, guys, you should go and see it after watching this video. But in all seriousness, some recipes have actually changed a bit. If you look at minced meat pies, as the name implies, it used to be more minced meat than it is today. Normally today they're made with fruit, spices, and suet, but in the olden days it used to be a means of preserving meats or food in general, and this is why you see a lot of, say, Cornish pasties, pies, you see a lot of chutes, you see empanadas here in Spain and in the rest of the world. It's all an old way of preserving Food. In my short format video, I took the skin off and I got a few comments about that traditionally it's probably not done with the skin off. So today we're going to leave the skin on and see how that goes. And then vinegar. Now, this is coconut vinegar. Um, should be available at most Asian supermarkets. If you can't get coconut vinegar, then just white, plain white vinegar works just fine. Black peppercorns, a whole head of garlic, four bay leaves, a little bit of sugar, some dark soy sauce, some light soy sauce some spring onions to garnish, and that's it. It couldn't be simpler. So let's dice this pork up. If many of you guys are at home and asking yourselves, but this looks nothing like the adobo that we make. Well, there's multiple types of adobo. The word itself comes from adobar, which is a Spanish word meaning to marinate. Although some say that it also comes from really a French word and then the Spanish took it and I'm not gonna get in, <laughs> into that little discussion here. But in any case, there are many different types of adobo and this one looks like a very easy recipe. So this piece of pork belly, I am gonna take the skin off this part here because it, um, that's where the, uh, the pork was printed when it was processed. So we'll just take that off. Even though that ink is actually food safe, I'm not super into eating that. Yeah, I agree with Andy on this. Um, even though the ink is considered food safe still, I just don't like the idea of eating ink. If it's a natural coloring, it's fine, but if it's any of the color dyes, mm, this, no. From there, pretty simple. We're just going to dice this. So we're looking for pieces about this size. Now this recipe can also be adapted to using with chicken as well. Um, the same process, although the chicken won't take quite as long to cook. So uh, bone and chicken legs work really well and they're, they're super affordable chicken legs. Uh, or you could use uh, chicken thighs or even breast if you wanted to, but it'll, um, it'll cook pretty quickly the breast, so don't overcook it. I agree with Andy on this. I would stick to more using the chicken legs or the chicken quarters. You know, what's the chicken quarter? or well, the thighs and the drumstick. But I would use the uh, chicken legs with this instead of chicken breast because Breast meat, if you cook it to temp, it can be perfect, it's not tough. If you overcook it, meaning that you cook it too long, it can become very tough. And like I'm sure that most of you already know, leg meat does contain more flavor. So why not use it? The pork will take a while to cook out. You're probably looking at an hour and a half to two hours. 
Let's get this diced up and then we'll get the rest of the ingredients into a bowl marinating. When butchering meat, it is a good idea to have a separate cutting board in the house to use specifically just for your meat. And if you're very technical about it, you can have another one for the fish, but and vegetables and everything else, but at least for the meats. It's easier to clean, especially if you're using a plastic cutting board instead of using wood with the meat. Um, it's more sanitary. And the size cutting board that Andy is using is a little bit bigger than my little red cutting board. And I'm actually quite fed up with using my little red cutting board. It's too small. Getting one that's more like the size that Andy has is better. It's about twice or three times the size of the one that I'm using. And it gives you more space basically to cut everything up. Instead of having to use plates and everything else to hold everything, it makes life easier. So I first was exposed to adobo in London. Um, there was a pretty large community of Filipino chefs in London. Mm -hmm and one of them brought it in or made it for staff meal and I was like, wow, this is delicious. And then I never really cooked it again until recently and, and now I love it. I cook it all the time. In London, we also had a few Filipino chefs working with us in the kitchen and uh, they never brought us any adobo for the staff meals. No, lucky Andy. I wonder where Andy was working in London and when. I wonder if we were working there at the same time. All right, so garlic. There's one. Look at that, a little blowout. Uh, I want quite a bit of garlic. Uncle Roger commended me on my amount of garlic, so we'll stick with that. So I'm gonna go with that, which is seven cloves. Nah, eight cloves. So it's gonna smash these, dice them up, get them in with the pork. If you're gonna be making like a lot of minced garlic, what you could do is peel all the garlic and then put that into your Roboku, your little food processor or your thermal mix and blitz it a couple times and the job will be done. You do have to wash an extra dish, but it'll save you time cutting. Unless of course you want to spend the time cutting. Garlic goes in and then bay leaves. That's Andy's using fresh bay leaves. Now, fresh bay leaves are more pungent than dried bay leaves. Dried bay leaves are more common, I would say. At least here, they're more common to get. I haven't seen many uh, fresh bay leaves. Dried bay leaves do have more herbal notes to them. Bay leaves are used quite a bit with meat dishes, with any soups, stews, stocks, things like this. We do use bay leaves quite a bit. And it could be for the reason that bay leaves contain enzymes that help break food down. Black peppercorns. I don't know, what's that, 10, 12? Light soy sauce, four tablespoons. Dark soy sauce, four tablespoons. And vinegar, five tablespoons. I'm liking Andy's video. He's very clear about what he's doing. He's very to the point. He has a very nice kitchen as well, by the way. So it helps having extra space because you can, you know, put things over here and there to work. And it also helps having a larger cutting board like he's using because you can actually use the cutting board as a surface to work on, not just to break the food down. Now just maybe two teaspoons of sugar. Very good. And we're just going to mix this. Things like this happen in the kitchen all the time. Um, sometimes when you get up early in the morning, you're having to work, you know. What I love though is Andy's expression when this happened. So everything's completely covered. And we're just going to cover that. We're going to chuck it in the fridge and marinate it. You want to do it for at least an hour and a half, but you can go up to four, five, six hours even. Now to re-emphasize, an hour does not mean 10 minutes. So if you are going to be in a little bit of a rush, you can speed things up, but if you don't, you let it marinate, the flavors will penetrate the meat and that intensifies the flavor. So our pork's been marinating for four hours now. We're just gonna put a little bit of oil in the bottom of a heavy base pot like this, something that you have the lid for. Um, spread that around and let that heat up a bit. All right, pork in. Get some colour on it. 
Now, one thing I would say is that if you don't own that many pans in the house, that's fine, but you need at least one Dutch oven, at least one. They are expensive. Some companies are not as expensive as others. I have a link in the description down below if you guys wanna check one out. It's a good one that I use all the time at home. And one thing to take into consideration when cooking at home is not just the type of pot that you're using, but also what it's made out of. You need to know what you're cooking and what you're going to be cooking in. If this could have a negative effect, like with cast iron, especially if it's not seasoned, you don't want to be using acids. And for me personally, it's either copper, which is quite expensive, stainless steel, which is not as expensive, but they still can be, or cast iron. And then if you have more money, you can try titanium, you can try other metals, but cast iron is much better than aluminium. I would suggest using a deeper pan when doing any shallow pan frying or sauteing with like a lot of oil. Like with this, it will be spitting. So if you have a deeper pan, you won't have like a ring of oil or you won't have as much around the pot. So what you're looking for is just a little bit of color like that on the outside. So now we've got a little bit of color, we're gonna pour in the rest of the marinade. And then we're gonna add two cups of just water. Stir that around. Make sure those bay leaves are evenly distributed. Turn your pot down to sort of medium low. Chuck a lid on it, and we're gonna cook it for about an hour and a half, for two hours, or until it's nice and tender. But we're gonna check it every 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so we've been cooking about an hour now, and we're looking pretty good. It's uh, starting to kind of soften up a bit the meat, but it's not falling apart. And we're just gonna leave this cooking for another probably half an hour, maybe 35 minutes, just for the sauce to thicken with the lid off. Once you've got the sauce, the consistency you want, and the pork's nice and tender, she's ready to serve. Now, as Andy said at the very end of that little segment, you want to serve this tender. So if you've been cooking this for the same amount of time as Andy, and you notice that the meat that you have is still a little tough, you need to cook it longer. And if the sauce has reduced too much, because you have the top off, it's going to be evaporating. If it reduces too much, you need to add a little more water to this. Just a little, not a lot, just a little so the sauce doesn't burn. If you've actually gotten it to that point. All right, let's serve some up. A few spring onions, probably not necessary, but I guess that's the chef for me. And there you go, Uncle Roger approved pork adobo. Much better than the Food Network. We haven't seen Uncle Roger's video with the Food Network, but he did have a few problems, if I remember, with that one. He was posting everywhere that he had issues with it, so I don't know if we will see it. The best part, time to eat some. White rice. Make sure you get some of that sauce on there. Mm. Super rich, really well balanced. Pork's cooked beautifully. And all the people that said to leave the skin on were 100% right. It adds a, another layer of texture, um, which I really enjoy. It also helps to sear the pork skin and put some color on it, add some extra flavor with it as well, instead of just like the boiled pork that we've seen before. Thanks for watching, legends. I really appreciate it. Yes, mm -hmm. I have a dirty mustache for good reason, it's for charity. If you're watching this in November, of 2022, the link's below to donate to my Movember cause. It's a great cause, so you know, any donation, small or large, is really appreciated. And one person who donates is gonna win a meat box from my work, Kilcoy Global Food, so even more reason to go donate to this fantastic cause. Chuck me a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe if you're not, and we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace. Well guys, overall, that was a very easy recipe. It looks absolutely delicious. And like I said earlier, Andy's videos seem very easy, very straightforward. He's very clear on the instructions. I've seen him quite a bit on TikTok. I haven't seen him on YouTube, but on TikTok I have. So it's nice to actually see him in a proper video. Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video and I hope you got a little bit of value out of it as well. If you did enjoy it, then be sure to give it a like. And if you do like my channel, then be sure to hit that subscribe subscribe button as it helps my channel out greatly and I do appreciate it. Be sure to stick around for this video coming up next and if you have any suggestions then let me know down below on what you'd like me to see. Until next time, take care.